I'd like to take a moment to let you all know about a new nonprofit organization started by my brother Craig. It's called Treats and Truth. They fill oversized brown lunch bags with snack items, chips, crackers, popcorn, cookies, etc. Also, a bottle of water, toothbrush, toothpaste, sanitary wipes, and most importantly, a small gospel tract book of John. No cigar? Uh, I'll have to talk to him about that. The bags are then hand-delivered to the homeless and people in need in and around the Los Angeles area. Let's help get this ministry off the ground. They're a 501c3 tax-exempt organization, so any and all donations are tax-deductible and greatly appreciated. Visit their website at treatsandtruth.org. Check out the show notes for the link. Also, please follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. Welcome to episode 154 of the Burning Bush Podcast, where we share the message of the Bible while enjoying a good cigar. Hope you're doing well, and I'm glad you've joined me. Today we're reading the New Testament book of Luke, chapter 11, with commentary from the notes in the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, and I'm smoking the Blackworks Studio Killer Bee Petite Ecuadorian Maduro in the Corona 45 by 46 Vitola. So let's go to the Blackworks Studio Cigars website and see what they have to say. Killer Bee. Bright herbal notes mix with a blend of pepper spice. Bitter citrus is balanced by sweet earth and dried fruit flavors. Cocoa, black cherry, and anise are blended with mild spice on the retro. And it is a medium plus in strength. Filler is Nicaraguan, binder is Nicaraguan as well, and the wrapper is Ecuadorian Maduro slash Connecticut. And the Vitolas are 4.5 by 46 and 5 by 50. That is the Killer Bee from Blackworks Studio Cigars. So let's get back into this week's reading in the book of Luke, chapter 11. I am a, uh, reading from the English Standard Version, the ESV, and verse 1. Now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation. And he said to them, Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight, and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, Do not bother me, the door is now shut, and my children are, are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his impudence, he will rise and give him whatever he wants. And I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, 
How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Now he was casting out a demon that was mute. When the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the people marveled. But some of them said, He casts out demons by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, while others, to test him, kept seeking from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and a divided household falls. And if Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebul. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away his armor in which he's trusted and divides his spoil. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest, And finding none, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. As he said these things, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts at which, at which you nursed. But he said, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. When the crowds were increasing, he began to say, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. And Spurgeon comments on verse 29, As the crowds were increasing, he began saying, This generation is an evil generation. It demands a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. Signs have been given that did not work faith in those who saw them. There is no necessary connection between seeing signs and believing what the signs point to. Israel in the wilderness saw great marvels worked by the Lord their God, yet they perished in unbelief. Pharaoh is still a more notable instance. What signs and wonders God worked in the fields of Zoan! How the Nile was crimsoned with blood and all Egypt filled with lamentation! The Lord turned the dust of the land into lice, lice and the ashes into plagues. He brought up frogs into their chambers and locusts devoured their fields. He darkened the heavens at midday and deluged them with hail and rain such as the land had never seen before. A grievous disease fell on their cattle and death on their firstborn. Yet all the wonders God worked did not soften Pharaoh's heart, and though for a while he trembled, he steeled himself against the God of Israel. If we do not believe Moses and the prophets— If we do not believe in Jesus Christ with the testimonies that are already before us, neither would we believe even if one rose from the dead, or though all the plagues of Egypt should be repeated on us with tenfold fury. There is no necessary connection between the seeing of wonders and believing in God. And back to Luke verse 30. For as Jonah became a sign to the people of Nineveh, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise up at the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, something greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, 
something greater than Jonah is here. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it in a cellar or under a basket, but on a stand so that those who enter may see the light. Your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light, but when it is bad, your body is full of darkness. Therefore, be careful lest the light in you be darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, it will be wholly bright, as when a lamp with its rays gives you light. While Jesus was speaking, a Pharisee asked him to dine with him, so he went in and reclined at table. The Pharisee was astonished to see that he did not first wash before dinner. And the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees cleanse the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. You fools! Did not he who made the outside make the inside also? But give as alms those things that are within, and behold, everything is clean for you. But woe to you, Pharisees! For you tithe mint and rue and every herb, and neglect justice and the love of God. Those you ought to have done without neglecting the others. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love the best seed in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces. Woe to you, for you are like unmarked graves, and people walk over them without knowing it. One of the lawyers answered him, Teacher, in saying these things you insult us also. And he said, Woe to you lawyers also, for you load people with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not touch the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets whom your fathers killed. So you are witnesses, and you consent to the deeds of your fathers, for they killed them, and you build their tombs. Therefore also the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and persecute, so that the blood of all the prophets shed from the foundation of the world may be charged against this generation, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it will be required of this generation. Woe to you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter yourselves, and you hindered those who were entering. As he went away from there, the scribes and the Pharisees began to press him hard and to provoke him to speak about many things, lying in wait for him to catch him in something he might say. And that's the end of today's reading in the book of Luke. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, as well as today's cigar. Also, Groundworks Ministries for daily Bible studies and devotionals. Treats and Truth Ministry, where you can get involved in helping to spread the gospel to and be a blessing to the homeless. And the Burning Bush Merchandise Store, where you can pick up some items to help spread the word about the show. If you know anyone who needs to hear this, please let them know about the podcast and help share the message of the Bible, the hope we have in Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. If you'd like to contact me, you can email me at steve at theburningbushpodcast.com, which is linked in the show notes as well. So until next time, have a great day, have a great cigar, and God bless.